This show. Guys, what can I say about this show? Uh, first of all, let's just talk about this jerk. The name, Connor. You guys know him as Play Content, or if you don't know him as Play Content, you should know him as Play Content. And, okay, I don't actually hate him, but... I kinda hate him right now. He had the bright idea that we should do a collab together and watch people date. Look, I'm no stranger to reality shows. I've sat through the vapid void that is The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. In fact, I watch it every week on Mondays with a couple of friends of mine and a glass of wine. But I never thought that dating around would be what it is. Let's talk about it. To the first blind date of my life, all right, I'll cheers to that. Hope you're not a serial killer. Dating Round released its first season in 2019. I saw it advertised yes. on Netflix and decided not to watch it. But by the time that Connor got his grubby little paws on me, I'd been conditioned to think that it might just be a good idea. I mean, it's got to be better than too hot to handle, right? The answer is yes. And Connor is nice to me, which is why I feel bad for calling him a jerk earlier. So I'm conditioned to do what he says. So I walked knowingly into the cringe fest that is dating around and I actually didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. Each of the first couple minutes of every episode of dating around is absolutely horrible, but Every first date starts as absolutely horrible. I don't care who you are. First dates are more awkward than the word awkward. It's a funny word, awkward, isn't it? There's something awkward about the word awkward, isn't there? Clutch! I cringed, I cried, I laughed, I snorted, and I stared in amazement at this box of awkward and embarrassing backstory in front of me. But don't just take my word for it. You need a true expert. Take it away, Connor. I, as many of us do, Trent included, enjoy series that insightfully explore the human condition while offering lasting consequences and romantic depth. So it's a shame I'm talking about Netflix's dating around. Actually, it does offer most of those elements, but I'm happy to pretend it doesn't for the purposes of that joke. The show concerns one person per episode embarking on five different dates. Out of the five, they choose which prospective match they most connected with and arrange a second date. If they decide not to choose any of the five, the forfeit is dating all of them at once while being insulted and belittled by all five. Like a normal date, except with five people. So just like a normal date, right? Obviously, that forfeit is a lie. There's no serious consequence to choosing none of their matches. Sections of each date are shown in sequence, adding an air of suspense regarding which match will be chosen by the episode's conclusion. Hopefully, the dates don't all occur within the same few hours. They are always dinner dates, so the primary daters would be uncomfortably full. That may be part of the challenge, but it seems sadistic for such a generally gentle series. Judging each primary dater solely on their demeanour in this show would be extremely unfair. Given the uncomfortable artificial setting, this and any other reality show inevitably offers. These people are naturally unlikely to truly reflect their strengths while placed in an intimate setting with several complete strangers, while there's a camera in their face and a boom mic in their face and another camera in their face. Although unfortunately, we as viewers are given no other insight into their behaviour. So let's mock their apparent shortcomings. No, let's not do that. The date has bravely ended a complicated and televised situation. With its engaging structure and versatile casting, dating around offers a believable warmth, as well as masochistically enjoyable proportions of relatable second-hand embarrassment that both the best and worst among us deserve to witness. Back to you at the studio, Trent. Even though I went into this ready for a hate watch, I am amazed at how invested in the characters I became during this show. It feels very natural in that forced date kind of way. Some of the people are incredibly selfish or at least give that vibe and others are not so much. Everyone in these stories though can be both the villain and the protagonist depending on 
your own point of view. You see several different types of people, older, younger, gay, straight, and there is something interesting in it for everyone who watches this show. For instance, I had no idea what was happening when a lesbian woman came onto the screen and started dating other women because I have no experience whatsoever in that field. So I didn't understand some of the small talk, but I still connected with them as people because surprise, surprise, they are people. I found that these people who I was voyeuristically watching dating in front of me became more than just people on a screen. They became actual real humans to me and that was kind of fun. I found them to be much more fleshed out than people on The Bachelor or Bachelorette who are just there for a lot of drama to ensue. It's interesting to guess which contestant might be left at the end of the night to return for a second date the next day. In fact, this video was solely going to be me guessing until I started to think about how this show was not as vapid as I thought it was going to be. Sure, it has its vapid moments, but so does life. And even the characters that you love to hate are still very obviously framed as real, sympathetic humans. If you've never checked out Dating Around, you might actually find it to be the breath of fresh air that you never thought that you actually wanted. I'm still not gonna stop watching The Bachelor, though. A man's gotta have one guilty pleasure, right?